the graphical method is the first and the most popular method of convolution computation starting with the convolution equation and expanding it for various values of k we observe that each impulse response is weighted by the input value graphically this can be interpreted as sweep the impulse response one sample period at a time over the input at each interval cross multiply the two waveforms and add all the product values to better understand this graphical procedure take an example of two signals xn and hn as shown and let's convolve them graphically as seen in the convolution equation the first step is to transform the signals xn and hn in terms of k that is obtain xk and hk also we need to generate a shifted impulse response h of n minus k therefore step 1 is to transform the given signals as a function of k step 2 is to flip one of the signal let's flip the signal hk and obtain h of n minus k step 3 As per the convolution equation we need to give an arbitrary shift to the flipped signal so let's shift the signal h of n minus k and obtain a signal h of n minus k with an arbitrary shift of n units step 4 is to find the regions of overlap between the two signals as seen there is no overlap between the two signals and hence the convolved result turns out to be zero in a region n less than 0 sweeping the impulse response past the input the first overlap occurs at n is equal to 0 multiplying the two signals the convolved output in this region is 2 with the next sweep in the to the impulse response at n is equal to 1 the signals overlap at two time instants multiplying the two signals and adding up the product values the convolved output in this region is 5 proceeding the same way at n is equal to 2 signals are multiplied and the convolved result turns out to be minus 1 a further shift to the signal h of n minus k at n is equal to 3 multiplying the overlapped region the convolved result is 0.5 at n is equal to 4 multiplying the overlap regions the convolved result is 1.5 at n is equal to 5 again multiplying the overlap region the convolved result is minus 1 and finally the next sweep to the signal it's observed no overlap is present between the two signals indicating the termination of the process and the convolution result obviously being zero the last step is to assemble all the output values to get the resultant output signal yn In region one, for n less than zero, the convolved result was zero. At n is equal to zero, the convolution result was two. At n is equal to one, the result was five. At n is equal to two, it was minus one. At n is equal to three, it was point five. N is equal to four, result was one point five. At n is equal to five, it was minus one. and lastly the result is zero for the region n greater than 6 the final convolved result values being 2 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47
फाइव माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव वन पॉइंट फाइव एंड माइनस वन The next section deals with analog convolution also called as continuous time convolution. Convolution exists for both analog as well as digital domain. Let us now examine uh, continuous time convolution. To derive the equation for con con analog convolution we will start with the discrete convolution equation already derived earlier. As we are dealing with continuous time convolution, the discrete time base is changed from n to t. Next, replacing k by a variable tau. Here, tau is used to denote the shift provided to the impulse response signal. And finally, the summation operation is replaced by an integration operation as this is a continuous time signal. The resulting equation is called as convolution integral summarizing the convolution integral provides an easy mathematical way to express the output of an lti system based on an arbitrary input xt and the system's impulse response ht Following the same procedure of discrete time signal, let us now graphically convolve the two continuous time signals shown. Step 1. Expressing the two signals as a function of tau. Step 2 is to flip one of the signals. And it's usually better to flip a shorter signal. Step 3 is to shift the reflected signal by T units. Next, find the regions of overlap between the two signals. With an arbitrary shift of T units, it is observed that this, there is no overlap between the two signals for a region T less than 0. Hence, the convolved output in this region is 0. A partial overlap is observed between the two signals with a shift in the signal with its edge t placed between 0 to 1. The output is obtained by multiplying the two signals and integrating it over the region of overlap. The convolved result being 60. With the next sweep in the signal, h of t minus tau, a total overlap is observed between the two signals. The two signals are multiplied and integrated and the integration result region being from t minus 1 to t and the convolved result being 6. In the region t between 2 to 3, Again, a partial overlap is observed and the convolved output in this region is for an integration limits t minus 1 to t to 2 turns out to be minus 60 plus 18. Finally, for a shift in the signal where the edge t is greater than 3, no further overlap occurs between the two signals, resulting into a zero output response. Last step is to assemble the outputs computed over the different regions of shift. Zero in region 1, a slope of 60 in region 2, a constant 6 in region 3, a slope of minus 60 plus 18 in region 4 and 0 beyond it. This is the way we can graphically convolve any signals whether analog or digital.